Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, I want to talk about Yao Nevis, a midfield, alternatives, the center back situation, Branthwaite, Inacio. I want to also discuss Bruno's contract, Sancho, and much more. So let's get into it. Someone cooked here. All right, let's get into it. So uh, first and foremost, let's talk about center backs. Um, you know, obviously this has been where there's been a lot of a lot of talk and a lot of focus. Um, one of the players that uh, United were, were linked with, that United were interested in, that they have missed out on already was, uh, was a Tosin, um, who looks to be going to Chelsea. Now, um, as I think we'd mentioned the last time a, a bit ago, um, when it was just Newcastle in the race, not so sure that they had it wrapped up, and obviously they didn't because Chelsea were able to come in and and get it done. Um, United's interest was there, but as I understand it, and as I was told the other day, uh, in discussions with the representatives of the player, the wage demands that were given were um, too significant for what United would want to offer, considering the role of the player not being signed as a starter, but an opportunity that would come in as, you know, maybe third or fourth center back. So, um, yeah, that's the reason there. And, and we will talk some more about the, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk some more about the wages thing a little bit later in this video. But uh, United definitely did not want to be giving, you know, wages. I don't know the exact number here. But from what I can gather, Chelsea may be offering somewhere around 130, 140,000 a week, um, which is just too much for a role player for what United are looking for at this point in time to uh, to change and fix up the structure on the wages and the, and the finances of it. In other center back news, you know, Gerard Braithwaite continues to be, I believe, the main priority and... Um, you know, I think that the Athletic kind of confirmed that last night as well, that he was a high priority. The biggest factor on this is, of course, Everton's financial situation, whether they will come down to a more reasonable level on um, on a transfer. You know, they're not going to pay $70 million for him. But if this gets down into that $45, $50 million range, then I think it is a deal that will happen. Been on United's radar a long time. A lot of things that could make this work. Just the finances. Just that's it. They're not going to crazy overpay for him. And they have alternative options. Now, um, Gonzalo Inacio, somebody that, you know, I've mentioned way long ago, last summer, talked about United looking at him. And I thought, maybe this is one for next season. And, um, and I think that he's sort of on the list. He's a little bit... He's really similar to Lissandro in some ways. On ball great passer, all of that, maybe more like Pau Torres, because he's really great on the ball. He's really great, you know, passing, building up. That's where he's outstanding. Unlike Lissandro, he's a bit weaker in going into duels, things like that. Um, so, and then he plays, he has played a bit more on other sides, but mostly his role, if I'm not mistaken, has been, you know, primarily the left center back in a three. And so, you know, yes, he's played on uh, other sides, but I think the whole season he played on the left pretty much exclusively. So, you know, that's the downside of it is he's not flexible so much. Um, obviously, Jared Brantwaite also played mostly on the left. Last year, I think um, Inacio also did play on the right, though. So, yeah, and he did a couple years prior. So, and actually started all the way on the right back in 2021. So, you could see kind of in with both uh, Brainthwaite and Inacio that they could be, they could be both sides, um, left-footed players, but they could be both sides. I know it's kind of funny because people, you see two right-footed center backs and nobody like 
thinks anything, but you see two left-footed center backs and it's like blows people's minds like it's impossible. Um, don't think it is. I think that I'm not sure that he's as good a partner for Lissandro as Gerard Braithwaite would be. So, you know, we'll see there. But you can kind of look at him, two left-footers, maybe Kilman below that. But, um, you know, Braithwaite, Inacio, Kilman, sort of as your left center backs are kind of shaping up as options. Then on the right, you have Todibo, Lenny Yoro. I think Lenny Yoro, if he was available, would probably go to the top of that list. Todibo, a very easy deal to do and one that has a pretty high chance of happening. And then maybe, you know, I don't know what, after you drop down that list, who else might be, who else might be there? Uh, Chalaba, perhaps, you know, um, might be, you know, an option as you, as you move down. But it would seem to me like kind of the plan is see if we can get Gerard Braithwaite in. Then we could get Todibo in and see about, you know, uh, on Inacio or Yoro um, and kind of mix and match in there. One, at least one, maybe two, just depending on fees, costs, all of that and, and what they can afford. Um, so there has been interest in Inacio for a long time. I believe firmly a... Brainthwaite alternative, but that doesn't mean if we miss on Brainthwaite that we go directly to him. We may look at a you know a right center back or a right footed one like Todibo Yoro instead. Um, that much I'm not sure of. What is clear though, and one thing I want to make very clear because I see a lot of mis misconceptions around this. Um, you see news starting to kind of leak out from the sides, and. United and Ineos can control what they leak and what they brief to press and what answers they give or don't give. When you start talking to other people, similar to the manager situation, things start to kind of get out and move around. And um, I think that's what we're seeing now is that, you know, as I said before, they were in contact with quite a number of people, quite a number of players and representatives. They were moving on deals. They are moving on deals. Um, I believe that they've moved a bit on Brainthwaite. They've made initial contacts on Anasio. Todibo, for sure, they have made contacts on as well. And rather than going like, we'll talk to Brainthwaite and we'll wait to see if it fails, and then we'll talk to the next one, they're opening it up on multiple uh, at the same time. So it gives it a, it's a little harder to know the exact, like, exact plan, um, because they're working on them in parallel, but that's what you want so that you can swiftly move and execute deals. And, um, yeah, but that's what I, I see going on there. Gerard Brainthwaite, they're still working on that, still seeing if they could get that done below before June 30th based on the finances of Everton. Otherwise, I think they could do a pretty easy deal for Todibo. Um, maybe in addition, but for sure they, either way, they probably can, Yoro remains an opportunity. Inacio, another alternative that I think is a, is a good player that they could turn to if they decide they want to keep that profile. Some of that could be down to the manager. You know, Braintwaite, I think, fits everything. If the manager changes or whatever the manager thinks, they might say what they prefer, you know, where, where they see that these options are good, but they might want to have a say in that. And I think it would be reasonable to present to them and say, look, we could get these players. Who do you want? Um... So yeah, that's where I see where we're at on center backs and uh, and things are progressing. You know, obviously, you know, playing the game with Everton is by June 30th, uh, we'll know before then whether they're going to come down on that fee or not. So, you know, a few weeks maybe um, to see there. But in the meantime, progress has not stopped. They're not not waiting. They are making contacts on these other center backs. In the midfield, um... Uh, you know, Yao Neves, obviously somebody that's been talked about so much this year. And I, as I kind of have said for a long time, it's not that United don't really like him. It's not that he isn't a great player. It's the fee. I'm led to believe there were some exploratory contacts. You know, I don't know about a straight up 60 million offer, but I'm led to believe there were exploratory contacts to see if there would be a deal doable at that kind of price. Um, but Benfica are holding out for a very large fee at 120 million, I think is what Fabrizio said there. And, and I, I believe that is the case. Um, they may stay in contact and dialogue to see if they can get him. 
But uh, yeah, I, very, very unlikely there. Ideally, they want to, I think, bring in two midfielders. Obviously, they're going to have to move Casemiro on for that to happen. Potentially as well, Eriksen or McTominay to make that happen. Um, uh, Yao Gomez from Wolves, I think, is a is a is a is a potential alternative to Yao Neves, who's very good, who's more reasonable in a fee, maybe forty to fifty million, and that I would keep an eye on that they could turn to. Um, in more defensive mold, you know, uh, Fofana. I think there's a there's good kind of contacts there with representatives on Fofana to look about moving a deal forward um, and kind of lining that up, uh, as well as Yulmund. Yulmund, Yulmund. So, you know, maybe those are like your two midfielder profiles, Neves and Gomez, Fofana and Yulmund. I don't know 100% about each to split them up, but I have a feeling they're a little more, you could kind of put them in those boxes, even though they're not identical players. But that would be maybe your four options at the moment. There may be more, but those are the four that I've heard of. And um, then there's there's a link this morning. I have no idea who this is. I have no idea where it came from. The link, I mean. Um, I So I cannot say whether this is true or not, but there's this link to this uh, the six at Coventry, the midfielder, uh, that played against us, a good player. Um, one of the best players in the championship, apparently, this last year. I, I don't know. But I certainly would be interested. I'd be intrigued by, you know, that kind of signing where it might be a good price. Um, let me see. Let me just look at what his name is to make sure I don't remember. I remember it. Um, ben Sheaf. Coventry City's Ben Sheaf. Um, yeah, I mean, if he's available, 17, 25 million, I would love to see him do maybe some opportunities like that. But um, but I guess we will we will still have to see. So, um Sorry, I'm just looking. Um, just looking to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, yeah. So those are all pretty decent names that make sense. And, um, and I think that... Uh, you know, that ideally they can get two of those if they can move on Casemiro and, and maybe somebody else. Um, but contacts have started on all of these. And, and again, people think things are not moving. They are. Uh, I think we'll see a good situation where they're all kind of getting lined up and then they can be knocked down. And some of them, I think, will for sure, most of them will wait until after July 1st. Uh, if you read up on kind of the financial situation, the profit and sustainability is tight till June 30th. Um, they're not going to want to put too much spending in this year. Gerard Braithwaite may have to be to get a good deal out of him. But beyond that, they're probably not going to want to put too much in this in this fiscal year. After July 1, they're going to want to. So unless they get significant sales during this year, I would suspect that most of them get pushed into July in terms of actually being finalized. But that doesn't mean we won't know earlier. And that doesn't mean we can't sign anyone. It's just it's just more likely that the uh, the rules will be a bit tighter prior to June 30 for us, um, making sure that we don't breach for the three-year period from 21 through 24. Um, so those are some good names there. And there is progress and work being done on that. On the forwards front, I have a, I'm not totally positive on here. Um, Benjamin Sheshko, obviously somebody they've been looking at for striker for a long time. Yes, he's admired. Yes, they're interested in him. Problem, 70 million. Problem two, the, there's starters other elsewhere. You know, um, at, uh, at, at, at if he goes to Arsenal, he's going to be the first choice player there. He's going to be, you know, the starter. Um, yeah, um, that he's going to be his starter if he goes somewhere like that, or maybe Chelsea. So you know, I would. 70 million, I think his release clause got to with the contributions that he made feels unlikely. I'm not sure who the backup striker is. We were kind of discussing that in the last live video and I don't have a solid name for it um, at this point in time. But, you know, I would for sure look to someone like Murata, Griezmann, you know, in that vein of, of player, an older one, uh, not too expensive that can come in and, and rotate and back things up. Um that's what I would look at. So it, it makes sense to me to do something like that. 
I don't have a lot of names as beyond Sheshko, but it is unlikely, as I'm told at this point in time, that they would be able to bring in um, Benjamin Sheshko just due to price competition and the uh, the role on offer not being as attractive as uh, you know Arsenal or Chelsea. Um, then there's the winger, and there's Michael Olise. And obviously the news has been building about Chelsea going for him, starting contacts with its agents, all of that. Um, certainly they're trying to ward people off of, uh, of him, you know, make it look like it's all, all done. I'm not saying they won't get him. They might. Um, it's always been about whether United move on the winger front and, you know, get something happening there. And part of the issue there is it's a big log jam, uh, because you have Sancho and you have Mason Greenwood, whose futures both need to be resolved. And um, there's no guarantee right now of either in terms of a sale um, because, you know, the clubs that have been interested are not. And that's where the I think the, you know, the manager thing does need to be sorted because obviously that could be tied to Sancho, things like that as well, though I do think he will still go regardless. Um, Elise is top of the list. If they move for that winger, if they can get to that, they have not been able to get to the point where they can make an offer yet but um I'm I, I, I'm not ruling it out still at this point in time they do have other options for wingers if they end up missing out on Lise and they want to get there eventually they also as I've said many times before would be looking to shift Anthony if they can I think alone is probably the only option there um that uh, Due name is a good one as well that could potentially be brought in. Um, good young prospect if they can, you know, keep get enough of these players out in that area if they miss on Elise. So that's another name there. But I don't know much more in terms of strikers. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of work on all of these, you know, from, like I said, Gerard, uh, Todibo, um, in the midfield, all of these players, they're working on it. I mean, there are, it's so quiet. I think people are convinced we're not doing anything. We are. It's a little bit odd because besides the manager, it's basically been business as usual, but better. A lot of contacts, a lot of work being done, a lot of things happening on these deals just quietly. Um, it's the beginning of June. Obviously, we want to have players in. We've got time. Um, I think we do need the manager situation to be set, settled and announced. Uh, I want to repeat this part for here for people watching just to make it clear. I want to repeat this. Um, I've not really been given any new information since before the FA Cup final, except that there continue to be contacts with other managers in the last in the time since the FA Cup final. I've not heard that plans have changed. I've not heard that he's that he's more likely to stay. I've not heard that he's more likely to go. I've not heard anything like that. I've not heard anything that would give me a reason to think that the plans have changed, except that they're continuing to talk to other managers. So my logic on that is, of course, it remains the situation that it's more likely that another manager comes in. It just remains that because, logically, they're still talking to other managers or representatives and there's been no clarification on his future. It'd be very easy to say at this point in time that he's staying for next year. There's no reason they couldn't do that, right? Um, he is the manager right now. So, you know, the longer it goes without them confirming that when it could be, that could be done in one minute, um, the more it seems doubtful that that's the case for next season. But we'll see. And there's nothing new on this. Um, except that they are talking to other other uh, representatives still, like Fabrizio Romano said. Um, I would still be inclined to believe Pochettino would be pretty high up the list, um, and that otherwise it remains pretty similar to what we talked about before. But I think that that needs to be resolved, so as these deals are lining up, you want some finality there in order to define it. One of the things that they're definitely holding the line on this year is wages, and this obviously tie into Bruno and Sancho, but it ties into these signings too. In years past, a lot of times we would see United going into competition with other clubs and almost always winning. And it's funny, people had the, always had the impression United would lose. They didn't. If you actually look, they pretty much always get their guy. Maguire, Fred, um, Sancho, so many more. If they wanted them and the club was willing to sell 
and they were in competition with another club, they would almost never lose except to Madrid, right? With Kamavinga, players like that. The reason for that, though, unfortunately, often came down to wages, that they would offer ridiculous wages that would offer much higher fees and uh, much higher, um, you know, uh, expenses to the players, to agents, to things like that in order to, to sway them. That's going to change. And so, you know, it's not the... It's a, I think it's a good project at United. I think it's going to be attractive to a lot of people, but they're not going to just win them over with money. Like they weren't going to just pay Tosin a bunch of more money just to get him when he doesn't fit the wage structure that they want, which I think, you know, if you look at it, the base is going to be more like in the 80 to 120 range for role players, you know, 150 to 200 for your, for your, for your kind of sure and more top end stars incentives on top and then you want the younger guys on 40 50 thousand so they want a much better wage structure and they don't want to just throw high wages at players to get them to join that turn into you know poison pills if it doesn't work out and makes it impossible to shift because it's not just about paying the money it's if it doesn't work you know or it's not ideal impossible to shift these players out we gave anthony like five six times his wages why why? Why on earth was that done? It makes it impossible. It makes it so hard to move him out where you're, you're going to have to pay fees. You're going to have to be paying part of the wages. These are disastrous consequences when you, when you do that. So um, they want to fix that and they're going to hold the line on it. And so, yeah, maybe we do lose out on players, but you know what? We lose out on players to competition, but we will keep the structure in order and it will enable us to you know, pay better. And, you know, sometimes it would suck to miss out, but it's more damaging paying expensive wages. Like if you get your guy, great, but it's really damaging. I'm not sure it's how the balance is, um, but I think it's more damaging to get a good player offering high wages and get a really bad player offering high wages than it would be to maybe get your second choice or something on good and fair wages. A lot of teams and a lot of good teams have been built on second, third choices. Um, so I, I'm not super worried about that, but but I do think it'll be, you know, some of the things that can appear to be bad news may be good news. And you can take that how you want. You can say it however it is. The wage structure needs fixing. And we should not just throw money at everybody to get them to choose United. And if that means we miss out on them, so be it as long as they, they have a good plan in the alternative and still end up getting good players in. So, you know, with Bruno and Sancho, um, with Bruno, as I've kind of said many times before, he could leave. That situation is not, you know, settled. It's not entirely put to bed. It's not something where it's like, yeah, it's a sure thing. Um, he's totally set. He's totally fine. He's all good. He wants a new contract. That's probably most of it. I don't think either party wants him to go. I don't think any of us want him to go. I don't think he wants to leave. But he's looking and playing for a new contract. Um, I think his only real option is probably um, Saudi. I, I don't really th think the Barcelona and the Bayer one, Bayern ones are totally realistic. Um, I understand that his he's on lower wages than some of our other players. Uh, I totally get that. I do. I, I completely get that. That being said, um, you know, we're mostly shifting those players out. We can't be comparing to Jaden Sancho because that was a terrible deal and that hasn't worked out. We can't be comparing to Casemiro because it's another one that's been used as an example of a bad deal that hasn't worked out. Yes, Rashford is on higher wages. I don't, and, and I've, I've spoken before about how with that one, they they might even want to restructure it. But that's even potentially why Rashford, there's been talk of selling him, is because he's on such high wages. They're not wanting to break that structure and go and give a 29-year-old, a you know, higher wages again. He's going to be 30, basically, at the start of next season. So you're talking about five years, an extension, then he's going all the way to 35. That's concerning. With someone with his much mileage, that, that may not, you know... You may not be able to stick that and keep it moving forward. Um, maybe, you know, they'll work something out where you can get a, a little bit of a bump, but keep the length the same. I don't know. But, the, you know, what? it's a tricky situation because 
you know, what he sees, and I'm sure his agent sees, is Varan leaving, Martial leaving, maybe Sancho leaving, all these wages becoming available. But those, those are needed to reinforce the team. And if he wants United to be competitive, that money needs to be spent on building this team out. Um, you know, so I get it. I get it. I get why he should be the most highest paid player on the team. But at the same time, you know, when you go look at like Liverpool's wage structure, it's so much better. You know, Bruno's contract is as high as anybody on Liverpool's team outside of Mo Salah, who has had like, and who got his new deal on the back of winning Premier League and Champions League and, and like breaking records. Um, that's kind of more where we need to be in terms of uh, in terms of wages and like it's not to say there aren't bad contracts on there but this is new people and i really don't see them being willing to kind of cave into this i think that they would um they would sell him if a if a big offer came in if if that's his demands uh a new contract would be sold i think they would you know omar barada is kind of the guy who would say no at City, and there's even a video you can look at of him talking to, uh, you know, talking um, in one of their kind of documentaries about it and about pushing back on players asking for wages, especially as they get older, um, and that you have to, and that you build in maybe team incentives into it. So maybe they'll do something like that where there's more of a team incentives, but I don't think they're going to extend it and give him a big deal. Maybe at the end of summer, once they see where the financial outlook is, they'll be more open to making some changes there. But it also depends how they see him in the long run and how the next manager sees him. Um, I love Bruno. At the same time, I think that people, you know, he he had from like March forward, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven of his goals came from March forward. He only had three in the, in the prior part of the year. He didn't have a barnstorming year. I, I, not, I, people have kind of got that impression. There's so much recency bias going on with the analysis of United season. Bruno was pretty heavily criticized up until March. He had a pretty poor year by his standards, especially up until that period of time. And then I think he did really well at the end of the season. He was doing amazing at the end of the season, no doubt. Um, seven goals in like six games or something, but, um, you know, he, he didn't have this like stellar season overall where I'd say, yeah, give him 300,000 off the back of that. You know, we've got to prioritize team success. So I think that is an issue. Um, I wouldn't give him a new contract personally. That's not to say I would sell him. I think it would be okay to say, we want you to stay. Let's see how we get on. And maybe next year we can figure it out once we see that we're doing better. And we've been able to build the team a bit more. That's what I would say. I know there's a lot of different opinions on it. With Jaden Sancho, um, I don't know. But if Ten Hag goes, uh, Wilcox obviously has a relationship with Sancho. I'm not saying I would support this, but I understand it. Um, Wilcox obviously knows Sancho from, from time at City. Um, if they decide, look, I think I could get Sancho going. We think we could get the best out of him. We think he'd more fit the way we want to play moving forward. Um, if a manager change happens, then, you know, if, if the only other alternative is another loan, I could see him staying. Um, you know, because spending 50, 60 million on another winger and you can't move Sancho and it's just a loan really bad on a financial front um, maybe even completely non-viable to spend the money if, if on a winger, if, if you can only loan him. So I think that one is a bit up in the air. I still think it's more likely he leaves, but, um, that one, we really are going to have to wait for clarity on the manager. And we also really are going to have to wait and see if anybody actually can come up with a solid obligation or purchase offer for him before we can tell what's happening there. Okay. That's what I have for today. Uh, I'm going to do another video or a live certainly later this week. I um, hope this was informative. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on. I will see you in the next one.